Hi, I'm Lewis Cahill from Gang and Gasoline. Today I'm going to do a video that I get requests for all the time, and that is I'm going to show you how I tie the leader that I use for bone fishing um, and also for permit and for redfish. It's uh, all very similar. I learned to tie this leader about, I don't know, 15 years ago from my buddy Bruce Chard, and I use almost exactly the same leader today. Um, it's one of the few pieces of gear that I'm super specific about, is I have a high level of confidence in it because of the way it turns over and the way I can control my presentation. And I think if you give it a try, you'll like it too. So the material I use for this leader is very specific. Um, I use the Rio hard alloy mono, saltwater mono, in 30 pound, which is 27 thousandths, 25 pound, which is 24 thousandths, 20 pound, which is 21 thousandths, 16 pound, which is 18 thousandths, then I use Seaguar's premium fluorocarbon in 20 pound, which is 15 thousandths, and 15 pounds, which is 11 thousandths. And we all talk about leader material in terms of brake strength, but when you're tying leaders, brake strength is not what it's important. What's important is diameter. That's what transfers the energy. If you drop in diameter too much at one station, you'll get a hinge point. Even worse, if you go up in diameter, you'll get an even harder hinge point. And that's why I go from 16 pound monofilament to 20 pound fluorocarbon, because I'm actually dropping in diameter, even though I'm increasing brake strength because of the material. So I like to, for this leader to graduate about three thousandths per junction, and that's how, that's how it works. So I'll start with my 30 pound, and I pull off about two feet. I just hold it, pull it like so. And on my, uh, on my butt section, I will pull off just a little extra because I'm going to tie um, a loop knot at the end, which takes up a little more material. And I'll go ahead and take a second to straighten this out and get it nice and limp. And I use a perfection loop here. I get to wear my old man glasses. I'm getting used to this. I, um, I use a perfection loop at this end. Uh, basically because it's easy to tie and because I like the way the line comes out of it. You can use any loop knot you like. Um, I use perfection loop in the butt ends of leader. I never use a perfection loop when um, the leader is level, like say a steelhead leader where it's all um, one brake strength because it's not 100% line strength knot. Uh, but for this it works just fine and it's, it's, a, it's a good knot. So I'll tie that and trim the tag and then I will pull off a section of my 20 pound, 25 pound, which is my 24 thousandths. And I am going to, at this point, use um, blood knot to make this connection. Um, again, you can use a, uh, a surgeon's, triple surgeon's knot if you like, or you know, whatever knot works for you is fine. I prefer the blood knot again because um, it lays out nice and straight. Um, and going from um, monofilament to monofilament or fluorocarbon to fluorocarbon, it works just fine. I am going to use um, a different knot when I make the jump from monofilament to fluorocarbon, and we'll talk about that when I get there. Um, and that's the only place where it really makes a big difference, um, where you make that junction. If you don't know how to tie a blood knot, or you don't know how to tie a perfection loop, or any other knot that I'm using, um, there's plenty of great knot tying videos online. I'm not going to uh, go through the details of every knot here, um, because that just is redundant and would take too much time. So uh, you can do a Google search and you can learn how to tie those knots pretty easy. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to continue to use the same, well, first of all, I'll show you this little trick. When you're cinching knots, we all know that you're supposed to lick your knots before you cinch them, right? And there's it's like everything in fly fishing, a huge argument over, oh, that doesn't do anything or that's, you know. So the reason you do this, you want to lubricate the knot because when you cinch a knot, it builds friction. And friction causes heat, and heat can degrade the strength of your material, no matter what material it is, right? Um, lubricating it, I don't think, is enough, especially not just licking it in your mouth. Um, the important thing, I think, is not to generate that heat in the first place. Um, and the key to that is to draw your knot together slow, not to pull it real tight. Um, I hold the knot in my mouth as I draw it together. That way it stays nice and wet and I can feel the heat with my tongue. If it starts to get too hot, then I need to slow down, right? Um, it should never get as hot as a sip of coffee in your mouth. If it does, then you know, you're messing up your knot. So this is how I do it. And just cinch that knot down nice and tight and trim the tags. 
Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to use the same length of material on each of my next sections, 20 pound and 16 pound. And I'm going to stop talking and speed the film up just to spare you watching me tie blood knots. Okay, now I have four sections, two feet each, of Rio hard alloy saltwater mono in 30 pound, 25 pound, 20 pound, and 16 pound. The next thing I'm going to do is to attach a two foot section of Seagars fluorocarbon, 20 pound. Now, if I were going to use this leader for redfish, I'd stop here. Um, and I fish that 20 pound tippet and I fish the leader at 10 feet and that works great. In fact, sometimes um, if I'm fishing winter redfish down in Louisiana and I'm turning over big flies, I'll tie an even shorter leader. Um, we'll talk about vari variations on the leader coming up. Now, one of the primary differences between monofilament and fluorocarbon is that monofilament absorbs water and fluorocarbon doesn't. And for that reason, if you use a blood knot, to connect monofilament and fluorocarbon, that hard fluorocarbon, which stays small, will cut that monofilament as it soaks up water and swells. And to prevent that happening, we have to use a different knot. Um, and there are two knots I think are great for this. Um, there's other knots, you could, you could use a uni-uni connection. Um, you could even use a loop-to-loop -loop connection if you wanted to, if you wanted to tie a bimini twist and put something in and go crazy with it. Um, but what I do is I use um, either a triple C surgeon's knot or a Seaguar's knot. And I'm gonna use the Seaguar's knot here because again, it's easier to tie. And I think it's a little stronger. I've been told it's a little stronger anyway. And I'm gonna show you how to tie this knot because it's super easy. I've laid the two pieces of material together and I've made a loop. And I'm going to take my, uh, my hemostats. These aren't actually hemostats. These are the little, uh, little loon um, D-ring pliers, which I like a lot. And I'm going to stick in here and I'm going to twist the same direction. So that's two turns, three turns. Then I'm going to take the pliers, grab both ends, um, both the tippet and the um, tag end, and pull them through the knot, just like that. And this knot is one that I will cinch on both ends. I will pull um, the line and I will also pull the tags. And just take your time when you're tying your knots and make sure everything cinches down. That's really what's important. And uh, here's another great point that everybody can argue about, but whenever I um, trim my knots, whether it's my blood knots or it's my uh, Seaguar's knots or triple surgeons, um, I always leave about a sixteenth of an inch tag coming off the knot just as an insurance policy. And uh, there's always the guy that says, well, that's going to cause a tangle when you cast. It's going to cause your leader to tangle. And there is no excuse that your leader should be touching itself in the airs you're casting. If it is, you need casting practice, not knot practice. All right, now I'm going to use the um, Seaguar's 15 pound for my final tippet. And again, I'm going to use another two feet. So every section of this leader is two feet in length. And if you've been counting with me, that's six sections. So my total leader length is 12 feet. And that's what I like because when I'm in my ready position, I have nine feet of line out of the, nine feet of fly line out of the tip. I have my 12 foot leader and I have nine feet of rod. I have a 30 foot reach right off. And now I am, uh, I'm back into um, fluoro to fluoro. So I'm going to use um, my blood knot again for this connection. Um, but again, it doesn't matter. You can use triple surgeons. You can use whatever knot you have confidence in. As long as it holds, um, you'll be fine. There we go. And that's my bonefish leader. Now, I fish this leader um, for permit as well. And um, a lot of people feel like they prefer to have 20 pound um, tippet for permit and uh, that's a legitimate argument um you know i feel like what i'm really after there is, is getting the eat i want to get that eat and uh, i feel like that lighter tip it helps me with that um you'll hear people talk about using 10 pound uh tippet for fishing bonefish and um you know honestly i think 15 pound fluorocarbon is you know 
a smaller diameter than 10 pound monofilament. Most of the time when you hear people talking about using 10 pound, they're talking about monofilament. Um, so at 11 thousands, and of course fluorocarbon has a, uh, an optical index almost identical to water. So I think that's very difficult for fish to see. And it's very supple and lets the fly um, move very, very naturally. I use a loop knot when I connect my fly uh, and that lets the fly dive in a real lifelike manner. Now the beautiful thing about this leader is that this, um, this Rio hard alloy mono is super, super stiff. So this stuff turns over like no other material on the market. When you're out casting in the wind or when you're casting heavy flies, that makes a huge difference. The beauty of this leader is this thing will turn over in almost any condition, perfectly straight, if you're a good caster, perfectly straight and it'll land that fly and then you've got fluorocarbon, you've got four feet of supple fluorocarbon with abrasion resistance when it goes across coral and stuff. Um, it's just a leader that I have a ton of confidence in. Um, I will do some variations on this. Like I said, I'll tie it a little shorter and I'll end it in 20 pound for redfish. Um, if you're fishing for snook or something that, uh, where they've got a real abrasive lip, you can um, go ahead and put a heavier fluorocarbon bite guard on the end of that. Some days when uh, the wind is just howling and I know it's going to be brutal out there, I'll tie me a leader where I double the length of my butt section. I'll use six feet even sometimes of 30 pound and then I'll graduate you know, down faster in one foot sections as I go so that I end up with the same length leader but I have that really aggressive butt section to turn it over in the wind and I find that makes a difference. So uh, give this a try. If you're uh, doing some saltwater fishing, tie up some of these leaders. I don't think you'll go back once you've used them. Um, and just having the flexibility, the ability to knock out a leader for the day's conditions is huge. I hope that that's helpful. Um, stay with us at Gink and Gasoline. There's lots more of great fishing information and especially bone fishing stuff. Check out our bonefish school in South Andros. If, you're, if you want to learn bone fishing, I don't know of a better way to shorten the learning curve and really get your game up to speed. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch up with you later. By the way, let me know what you think about the, uh, the kitchen videos. This is the second one I've done, and uh, I'm, I'm waiting for some guy uh, you know, with the username Steelhead69 to tell me, dude, your kitchen sucks. I can't believe you have a microwave. Thanks for tuning in.